Hey y'all, I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate. We are Real Estate Elevated. So today's episode of I'm Moving to North Carolina, Now What? is another shorts edition. This one's a little fun. Covenants versus an HOA. Restrictive covenants are kind of an interesting historical document, if you will. Oftentimes they were crafted at the inception of a subdivision where an HOA is a little bit more of a kind of modern era thing. But a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. So let's break that down and talk about what are restrictive covenants, what do they outline, and then what's an HOA and what's their purpose as well. So keep in mind, covenants are a set of rules where an HOA kind of makes up the rules and enforces the rules in modern day society. Covenants can be enforced, but typically it's through a legal route and it's usually the neighbors and the homeowners themselves that are forcing those to be enforced. You might walk into a neighborhood that has restrictive covenants but look around and realize that quickly everybody's breaking those rules. Just know that doesn't mean the rules don't exist, but it does mean that maybe the neighbors are just choosing not to follow them. Another thing is that covenants can actually expire or they can auto renew for maybe a shorter period of time. An HOA is kind of in perpetuity. Very rarely do you see those get removed because it would take a majority or unanimous rule in order to have those invalidated. The typical time frame for covenants is usually about 30 years from when they were written to when they expire. In some cases, the covenants will then auto renew for about a decade period until the entire subdivision decides that they no longer want to have those in place. Covenants also cover the intention of the community and how the land is actually going to be used. This is where you're gonna see those restrictions on the size of homes or the height of homes, how many homes can be on a lot, whether or not you can subdivide and so forth. Where an HOA is more or less enforcing what the aesthetic of the neighborhood continues to be like and where your trash cans are located. They're a little bit more specific. Um, this is also where you typically see some bylaws outlining what type of fencing is allowed. So it's good to look at both of the two documents because in some cases one set or the other is going to be more specific as to the usage of the land. And then also keep in mind guys, sometimes you can have only covenants and not an HOA. So there's still restrictions in place, but there's not an HOA that's necessarily overseeing anything. So covenants are something that is definitely a material fact, but this is one of those ones that we see sometimes left out of an MLS listing. Highly recommend anytime there's not an HOA in the listing, kind of doing a quick variance search and making sure that you search for other listings in that particular neighborhood to make sure there's not potentially some covenants that could also run with the property. So that in a nutshell is the major differences we see between restrictive covenants and an existing HOA or homeowners association. I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate. All right, y'all, thank you for joining us today. Be sure to like, share, and follow us on Instagram as well as YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts. Again, I'm Laura Richardson with Relevate.